Welcome to EMTB videos. So we have finally got our hands on a Shimano EP8 production motor. It took a while. So we are going to do a test against the Bosch Performance uh, CX with the 85 Nm update. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, talk about the EP8, that it isn't as powerful and uh, it really isn't as good as uh, people were expecting and uh, we we don't really agree with that because uh, we thought the EP8 was really powerful uh, and uh, Rob Ride's EMTB did a test where the EP8 was pretty much the weakest of them all so uh, we talked a bit and uh, and we couldn't really understand why there was such a big difference between uh, what we thought of the motors uh, could it be that we did the test in different cadence so, we are going to try to set things straight this time. We set the Shimano EP8 to maximum everything, in both boost mode and trail mode. So, power and uh, amplification, everything maximum. The Bosch Performance CX doesn't have app support, so uh, it's just default settings. The first test is going 30 seconds up a hill, and we measured how far can we go, and um, we measured cadence and power. We started with 60 RPM and we tested in uh, a lot of different gears. Unfortunately, our test bikes were 27.5 on the EP8 bike and the uh, 29er wheel on the Bosch Performance CX. Due to the difference in wheel size, it's difficult to find the exact same uh, gear ratio, but um, we tested in a, a lot of different gears and we ended up running the same gear for both bikes. There were just too little uh, difference between the measurements. If we had changed gears, the differences would have been much bigger. So we'll just keep it in mind when we analyze the data. The Shimano EP8 covered 125 meters in this 30 second run at 60 RPM cadence. The Bosch Performance CX covered 129 meters. That is pretty similar. We did just under 60 RPM on both bikes, 59 for the EP8 and 58 for the Performance CX. That's close enough. But if we look at uh, rider input, there is a pretty significant difference. The Shimano required 56 watts average rider input, while the Bosch required 72 watts. So the conclusion from the 60 cadence run is that the Shimano requires significantly less rider input. The EP8 amplifies more at low cadence. Even though maximum power might be lower, none of the bikes are close to their max in this test. So the amount of amplification is what makes the Shimano feel more powerful. At a cadence of 80 RPM, things have changed completely. The Bosch Performance CX needed only 62 watts to cover 149 meters, while the Shimano needed 70 watts to cover 142. Again, we can see that the Bosch Performance is riding a bit longer, a bit further, and that's because of the bigger rear wheel. The difference in distance isn't that many percent though, but the difference in power is considerable. So the Bosch Performance CX requires less rider input to cover about the same distance. The Performance CX amplifies more at medium cadence, but you have to time the bikes or ride them side by side to notice the difference. At a cadence of 100 RPM, the EP8 took 70 watts of the average rider input to cover 156 meters. That's an average cadence of 98. The Bosch Performance CX required slightly less, 68 watts average input. And the distance traveled is 166 meters. And we have to say that is significant. We have to take that in account in this test. Even though the power and cadence are looking pretty similar, it has covered 10 more meters. So we're giving this to the Bosch. The Bosch Performance CX requires about the same rider input to cover a slightly longer distance. The Performance CX amplifies a bit more at high cadence. The second test is an all-out run at uh, whichever gear felt right. We're not going to focus too much on the data here, because we only did a couple of runs. But there isn't that much difference in time. And, well, it's a bit surprising, because the Bosch felt a bit faster. 
It seems we worked harder on the Shimano, so it feels right giving this to the Bosch. And we tried again, starting from standstill at the foot of the hill. This forced us to ride at the lower cadence, and this time it was much closer. The times are the same, but it seems we worked a bit harder on the Shimano. We didn't do enough runs to say anything for sure though, so we are not reading too much out of this one. So, final conclusion is that the EP8 is a really powerful motor from a standstill. It amplifies rider input very well at low cadence. The Bosch performs better at higher cadences, and we give it the victory in the all-out tests. But between the two different all-out tests, the difference isn't huge. The difference seems slightly less than in the test by Mr. Ride EMTBs. And uh, well, we have ridden six different pre-production EP8 motors, and there are differences in uh, how powerful they are. These motors have sort of a default uh, settings file stored, and the bike manufacturers can store their own settings over this file. So based on our experience, these settings wasn't uh, set properly on all test bikes. Anyway, uh, we sort of see the same thing that uh, Rob has seen at higher cadence. So, which is better? Power at lower cadence or power at higher cadence? Well, we guess it depends on your riding style. If you're looking for all-out speed and power, the Bosch wins. But uh, that's not really how we ride uh, our EMTBs. The EP8 offers more power at lower cadence, which is typically at lower speeds, perhaps on demanding trails. The Shimano is quick and powerful off the line, but it loses a bit of ground when riding at over about 20 km per hour and up steep climbs. But if you want a motor that will give the best blend of power and control, and will handle steep technical climbs with ease, we think the Shimano is the better choice. Oh, and the rattle. Yeah, it's still there. Unfortunately, we only had this bike for a short while, so we couldn't test the motor on prolonged climbs. Shimano says uh, they have improved the motor cooling, and if that's the case, the EP8 will run at higher power for a longer time before uh, reaching thermal equilibrium. And this is the point where the motor power is reduced to 250 watts. So I guess we'll have to look into that in a later test. Thanks for watching.